Hello, welcome to the Mostly Yoga Podcast. My name is Aaron. This is my show, episode number 23. I'm going to be talking to Blair. Mm, rum, rum. But you already know that from looking at the title. So yeah. Uh, before we start, I want to take this opportunity at the beginning of the party to, agri- uh, to address two things. Uh, first thing is just to say a big thank you to everybody for tuning in and for listening to me talk and to ask questions and to make mistakes. Uh, after having spoken or after having done the party with Malvina in the last episode, uh, she's really helped me to promote uh, the podcast. So I had a lot, a lot of... Bleh. <laughs> I've had a lot of new... I need to enunciate my words. I'm, I mumble all the time. <clears throat> I had a lot of new listeners, that's what I'm trying to say, that have been tuning in for the first time. So hello. And people who have been reaching out to me and just showing that, you know, that they listen and, and they really like it. And it's nice. And I really appreciate the spot. Lah. So uh, it's been great. I enjoy doing this and I like learning and I like listening to the people, to the interesting people that I have on who have all these interesting conversations with. So I'm glad that you as well, you the listener, enjoy it as well. And I'll keep doing it as long as I can, as long as I'm free to, to yeah, to keep, I, I mean, I, I like to do it, I like to learn, I like to talk to people, so I'm going to do it. Mm. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. See you here. Uh, second thing is that if you like what you hear and you like to support the podcast, there's a donation link in the description where you can buy me a coffee. Uh, it's a, it's a strange thing to ask for money for doing this. And I, I mean, I usually wait until the end of the podcast to mention about donating. But, um, yeah, like as much as I enjoy doing it, this takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time to create. And I don't get paid for it. Like, you know, I don't get any money. I, I lose money, in fact, by paying for the subscription and all this kind of thing. So, um, I mean, not complaining. <laughs> not complaining. Uh, just like, if you if you want to support that, just, it'll be great. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you give a little bit. You can give a lot. You can not give it all. Doesn't matter. Because it's still free to listen to. And uh, the money goes into... Funding my daily eggs and routine yakun toast fund. And it goes to paying for the subscription of this podcast thing. And maybe in the future, if I want to add on additional gear, additional equipment, I'll probably have to, I'll be able to, right? I can just upgrade it. And I mean, like my sis, my setup now is pretty compact. I like it as it is, but if I want to, improve on quality in the future, something to think about. So, yeah, thank you if you donate. Thank you if you don't. Eh, let's talk about our sponsors for today. we got BC Flow State, of course. Rediscover the way you move, feel, and perform through the use of natural and authentic movements that can help you build strength, regain your mobility, and reconnect yourself with your physical body. Head on down to his Instagram at BC Flow State bc underscore f l o w s t a t e for all sorts of fun fitness stuff and movement stuff as well and yeah i haven't seen him in a while i haven't seen you bronson in a while so i hope you're well hope everybody is well next sponsor is um homemade chili by red dot chili peppers it's my friend steph and she's taken over her dad's secret chili recipe and if you love spice, uh, you're going to love this. So spice up your life with this uh, homemade cilantro chili by Red Dot Chili Peppers. And yeah, for the love of all things spicy and green and good, follow the Instagram page and order a bottle or two or three uh, in the link, in the description link in the in the. Yeah, like all the all the links are there, lah. Okay. Uh, I learned quite a bit about Blair in this podcast. He shares with us 
about his yoga journey, about his past, about his time back in Scotland, and his experiences as a new teacher back when he was first teaching in Australia, I think, and and to now when when you know he's here, he's he's reached this place of of you know experience and and how he teaches from that place of 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 his truth. Uh, it's quite interesting to hear. So, yeah, fun times. Without further ado, here, uh, here is Blair. Enjoy. Welcome, Blair. Thank you for agreeing to come down and do this with me. Malvina did the last episode, and then I'm sure she spoke to you about it. And then now, here you are, and I'm very excited to have you here as well. A lot to learn. I have a lot of questions prepared. Um, do you have anything you want to say before we start? Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me in here, uh, Alan. Um, okay. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, my first podcast. Mm. So oh, yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to sharing and talking all things yoga. Okay. I think the whole the, the audience is ready as well. Okay, so here we go. The first question, and hopefully this question comes in three parts, but you can... I think this is a powerful question that will unlock everything. Okay? So here it goes. Who were you before yoga? How did you come to find yoga? And how has yoga transformed you? Wow. Oh. Past, present, future. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, whoa, it's a, we could do two hours on this, Alan. Um, yeah, I mean, before I, I, I mean, I'm from Scotland, west coast of Scotland, a town called Ogan. Guess um, you couldn't tell. Yeah, <laughs> the accent. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I came from there, I came from a, a, a farm over there in the West Coast, so um, I was brought up there, and um, when I was a child, I mean, I just, I loved the freedom of being on a, on a, on a farm and um, running around and um, tractors, you know, cows, sheep. Wow, <laughs> and like so you grew up with that kind of, yeah, that kind of yeah. environment? Or? Yeah, so I mean, I, I, that was my whole life. Um, it was my mother's father that had the farm, so he was, I was very close to him. Um, I always remember him carrying me around. He used to we used to have um, milk as well. We had like a hill farm and, and and cows as well. So we had a, a back then we had dairy. So we used to deliver milk to the hotels, and he used to take me around the, in the in the pickup truck and take me into the hotel. And uh, how old were you? At this? Oh, I would be like three, four, maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like I was young, you know, yeah. and um, he died when I was, I think, I was, when I was six. He passed away then, so I only re- vaguely remember him, uh, but I do re- clearly re- remember him, you know. And, and um, so he, he had quite a strong influence in me. He totally believed in me, mm. so he gave me that, um, you know, that young younger years of of, of believing in, in, in myself. So I always, I always, I still carry that um, that belief that he he gave me. And um, he, you know, he, he took me everywhere, and, and um, I was there a lot uh, around him. Um, also, my, you know, my parents were, were amazing. They've supported me in everything I've ever done in my life. So that's been incredible. Wow. Um, yeah. So my, my father and my mother, who are still alive, and they're they're um, they were, you know, really influential um, with me. But going 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 into the uh, what I back then I was. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I I went to school there, and then I started playing a lot of sport, um, yeah. and sport really um, grabbed me. I played a game called Shinty, which is like uh, it's like hockey, it's uh-huh. like ice hockey on grass. Oh, okay, <laughs> so it's quite a, it's quite a, yeah, it's quite quite an, an interesting game. It's only amateur, but it's uh, it's a beautiful game. And it's uh, quite a lot of skill involved in it, a lot of very athletic. So that that sport was, um, you know, I I I, I loved that. And played right through, and um, basically when I was uh, 17, 17, 18, I got selected to play for the under 21s of Scotland. We had a little international with Ireland uh, each year, so I got I got selected to play for that. And then I, um, and that was really when I started to learn a lot more about um, like nutrition and um, you know even stretching and, and, and sport and whatnot. So we had um, a dietitian mm. who gave us some. Information about how to eat and whatnot, and this is in school. This was this was when I was seventeen. Hmm. Yeah, when I when I when I began uh, playing playing sport for for, for, for Scotland, it was as I say, it was just a, a small international and amateur uh, sport. So the um, and then we also had a sports psychologist, 
Oh. Uh, and I always remember we're in, we're in Ireland, we're in um, Galway, over in Ireland, we're playing the match, and uh, just before the match started, the coach brought this lady in, and um, she got us all to close her eyes and start to just start some breathing, some breathing processes. And so we were um, moving through these breathing exercises, um, and then she got us to visualize, uh, you know, being on the park, and then Notice, uh, she told us to think of getting to the ball first and took us through these visualisation processes. And um, I anyway, went out and played sport that day and it was just incredible. Hmm. Like it, it completely blew my mind, the, uh, the, power, the level of focus I had. Um, and the, the game was, I'm not saying easy, but it was, it was much more effortless than it, it was before. I was always told that it's good to have nerves before a match. It's a sign that you're committed and you know, so... I would always think, you know, if I hadn't been to the toilet three times before I played, <laughs> there was something wrong with me. Yeah. But that day it was different. It was sort of, I clearly remember it. I kind of basically got to the ball first every every time, and um, it was an incredible experience. And I spoke to the lady afterwards, who was a sports ecologist, um, and I was asking her about it because it, it was so fascinating. Strange, yeah. yeah, a lot of my teammates didn't really register with it, but for me, I was like, wow, what, what? And she, I always remember she mentioned something about yoga. Uh, I don't even know if it's half the yoga or what's in, but it, it stuck in my mind and I, I bought a book when I went back home and uh, I don't even know what the book was called, but I cannot, I remember trying to read it and it was, I didn't understand anything in mm. that book. Um, so I then got some books in sports psychology and started to study that a little bit and, and like apply it and create my own little routines. I was only using it for like big sporting matches. Um, and um, you know anything important that I needed to, to do but basically it would just lie down relax my body it was really a yoga nidra mm. um, so I would, I would lie down there and relax it and see all of my like I, I would visualize positive and negative signs going through my body through my blood basically and then I would imagine my head opening and then all the negative signs going out the top of the head and out my fingers and then just the positive ones circling back through me. So this was just something I came up with myself. Oh, so this isn't a technique that you learned from her. This was just you visualizing your yeah, own. Yeah, just yeah, it was something I just sort of came up with my, mm-hmm. myself. I was just lying, relaxed, and then I started to feel sort of just my energy flowing mm-hmm. as I started to, and then I started to kind of got this kind of technique I started doing. Um, and of course now I I realize oh this is more just a, a yoga nidra. Mm-hmm. You know, observing f- the flow of energy or prana or chi, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was feeling that in my body and I was just using my understanding of, of, of um, yeah, I, I was actually, I became a heavy diesel mechanic when I left school. Oh, okay. So the positive negative, negative sign was like the battery, you know, the oh. positive negative. So I, I was just using that as a, a, as a, as a kind of a visualization. Oh, because you're like sort of taking what you experience and you rationalize it in your own way, la. like because you studied, uh, you did, um, Worked as the mechanic, yeah, that made yeah. sense to you, la. Yeah, yeah. So it was just it was very intuitive. It wasn't really planned or or anything like that. And that'd be, I mean, that would be probably a year after I'd, I'd been introduced to it. Mm. Yeah, and I'd, I'd kind of dabbled in it and I read a few psychology books and whatnot. But the, um, I, I, you know, I got, I kind of got interested in it at that point. And um, but yoga always stuck in my mind. It was always, um, it was always there. Anytime I ever seen, my mother had some. Videos, DVD, mm. not DVD, but you know the cassette, video cassettes. That's how long ago it was. Yeah. VCR. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. And she, I always remember having, having them. I would put that on something. So I learned crow pose. Oh, yeah. So and that was even before that actually. Yeah. So she was doing, doing doing a little bit of yoga at that point, but I didn't really associate it to anything. It's more just about a party trick. So when was the first? When was your first like class or or your first? First class would yeah. be yeah it would it would have been I would have been like twenty one twenty one when I first went to I know probably younger than that actually yeah uh, I went to a half a yoga class mm. uh, it was a lady who was teaching it and um, went in there and, 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 and done the class and I never really resonated with it I didn't really it was I was getting stuck a little bit it was the class it was no rhythm or no flow and um, so I, I never I didn't go back to it really mm. I couldn't really yeah it was it didn't it completely didn't resonate with me. Um, and I tried a few more from then, you know, when I seen it, I was always kind of drawn to it. And I never really, you know, YouTube wasn't going at this point. Mm. This is back in the, you know, early 90s, late late 80s, early 90s. 
So, um, so, so it's a long time ago, and, but the, I, I was always drawn to it. For some reason, yoga was, you know, when I seen it, I was like, oh, okay. And I remember Sting, Sting practiced yeah, yeah. yoga, and you, he yeah, practiced uh, that. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. And my, my sister always listened to the music, and I used to love his music, and he's, you know, what, and I was like, oh, wow, it's interesting. And Madonna practiced oh. it back then as well, and stuff. So, um, I, I kind, it kind of resonated with me. You know, but I was, um, yeah, I was, I was more into to sort of playing sport. I played mm. golf in the summertime and uh, shinty in the in, in the winter time, and um, that was my kind of life. So then, yeah. from the first class, the Hatha one that you went once and probably didn't go back again, what was the? Then how did how did that experience? Yeah, I mean, shape I shaped everything else. Um, yeah, I, I, I never, I never found. Uh, in the town, there was a, there was a, a yoga class going on in in one of the sports centres, um, but I was never drawn to it. Mm. Um, and the next class I, I went to was actually in um, it would be in two thousand two thousand one. It was I was travelling in Australia, and um, I was over there just backpacking basically. And I was I was travelling around, and I, I it was a few places I went to and there was yoga there was yoga classes there. So I went I done a few and they were a little bit better, but it was still it still never really resonated with me. How old were um, you during this time? I would be twenty seven at that point. Oh, so it's like twenty one and then nothing until twenty seven. Nothing really until, until twenty one, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no so no no class. I was still um doing Finding yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but at that point I was I was in I was definitely in quite a bit of pain in my back. I had it was, see I I'd injured my hip um, when I was about 21 playing sport and um, ran around the country trying to find somebody to fix me mm-hmm. so um, that uh, you know I was I was like that's what basically made me stop playing playing sport um, and I was uh, yeah so I was I knew yoga could help me there so I was I was when I was in the show at that point I was looking to find some something that could maybe help me but nothing really what I didn't really feel the effect mm-hmm. of, um, of the, or the power of the practice at that point there was no sort of real inspiration at that point. Then after after entering a class in Australia, it was like after that one class or after a few classes. Um, no, I I didn't get in, I didn't actually start practicing yoga mm. till later till two thousand six. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So I was away. I went back. I was just traveling in Scotland. I went back to Scotland, and then I um, I went to my what to work for my uh, the company I used to work for, and then I was. I'm like, I need to leave this country. <laughs> so I, uh, I then went to Germany, went over to Germany to work. Uh, I was in Germany for a while and then I went to the US, to mm. America. I was working for an engine company mm. uh, there and I, um, yeah, I, had a, I, had, I mean, I had a great time. When I left Scotland, I had, I had so much fun, met amazing people. I um, was earning good money, enjoying, enjoying my life. Um, and then the US was, was, was great as well and, and between all that I actually applied for a, um, a citizenship in Australia because I, I really enjoyed Australia I felt really free over there oh okay so um, yeah I, 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 I moved back there in 2006 January 2006 I think it was um, and went to Perth Fremantle um, and my tools and whatnot got sent over from the US oh. went back home for a couple of months and then went to um went to, to there and then started working for uh, Cummins Engines, an engine company over there. Still still in engineering? Still in engineering, yeah. And I was doing troubleshooting and I was all kind of all over the, the west coast, of, uh, oil rigs, mining and different things. So it was, it was fun. I had a great time. I had a, basically spent a lot of time up in the Kimberley, which is one of the, one of the oldest parts of the, uh, you know, the world and um, driving around up there myself, just going out to different um place mine sites or, or, or power generation sites and repairing engines and, and, and mm. um, troubleshooting there's a lot, but that point there's a lot of electronics so we're doing that sort of, a lot of that kind of work um, yeah so and, and that, that's what took me to, to Australia and then at some point um, I was actually I was planning on um, I was you know I didn't have much I had a great life but I didn't have much of a life outside of it okay I, I was yeah. working all the time yeah. and yeah, I could have time off but um, to have a, a life outside of it, it was, you know, my work consumed me. So I decided I was going to, um, I, I wanted to do a, a boat trip from Sydney to Panama by, in, a, in a small boat. Um, Sydney to Panama, how long was that journey? Oh, it was going to take a few, like, it was going to go in one of the yachts, super yachts, uh-huh. and, then, and then travel across. So I was learning, I, w- I went to Sydney to get my tickets uh-huh. to do all that. Okay. 
um, and then I um, became, I started practicing yoga basically over there. Oh, I thought, on the, the boat? No, not on the boat. <laughs> so, okay, Sydney. And yeah, then, set up for Sydney. Okay, so then did the Panama trip happen? I, no, uh-huh. I, didn't, I ended up not doing that, yeah. Uh, okay, tell me, how how did that shift? So, you, you went down to Sydney. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to go on this epic couple of months trip on a boat or whatever yep. to Panama. And then, who knows what's going to be there waiting for me. A lot yeah. of adventure. And then you, how did yoga snip in and then stole you away from that trip? Yeah, so I mean, I was basically going to go to, to Panama, I was going to go to Argentina, learn Spanish, I was going to go back home and then come back to, and I was going to go to Queensland and learn to be a helicopter pilot. What? So that was my plan, that was the kind of plan I had. Okay, that's, a, that's an insane plan, eh? like, okay. <laughs> I worked on helicopter engines as well. Oh, so okay, I, so it makes sense, right, right. So, but I had, you know, I, I didn't, I was just going to learn to fly them and then just You kind of look like a helicopter pilot now with that, <laughs> yeah, both on it. Yeah. Go on. So that was, uh, that was the kind of the, 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 the plan at that point, but, um, you know, I was, I've always been open to ch- mm. things to change and something's always guided me within. You know, How old are you uh, at this point? I was tw- 27. Still, okay. Uh, tw- uh, tw- uh, or 28 at that point. No, 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 I was older, sorry. I was, I was th- in my 30s at that point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So it's been a couple of uh, years since the first Perth, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be 32, 33. Okay. Yeah. So you were in point. Australia in how many years, like three years by then? By then I was, I was um, two years in Australia, okay. or a year, just, no, just a year, 18 okay, months okay. or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, because um, uh, I spent a bit of time in Germany and in the oh, US. Right, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, and then I, I got to, um, when I got to S- Sydney, I was actually, uh, we went into the first Lululemon shop, actually, that ever opened in, mm-hmm. in Australia, and I went in there, and um, I didn't know what it was, I was just looking for a pair of you know, yeah. They said, oh, we've got a yoga class on, on Sunday. Oh. So I'm going to play golf beside you. So I, I ended up joining the class. And, okay. uh, the class was, wow, it was amazing. It was a vinyasa class. And the lady says, oh, you should come to the studio in Neutral Bay. Mm. Um, if you want to come up there and, 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 and do a class. So I went there on the next the next night. I went there and, and done a class. And it, the class blew me away. It was like, wow. Mm. They just spoke to me. They spoke to my values. spoke to Stephen. They moved me. challenged me. Uh, I felt like at the end of the class, I was like, wow, it's incredible. So I um, went back the next day. <laughs> it's a seven day pass. Ah, uh, back the next day. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, uh, and then the next minute, I was like, I was, I was there every single day. Um, and in between that, I became, or, or during that, I decided to stay in Sydney and I became a personal trainer. Ooh. Yeah, personal trainer and a holistic lifestyle coach. So I was, I was kind of doing that. and. But you know, always drawn. I was practicing yoga all the time, mm. and uh, I was kind of learning about the body. And it was the start of my journey, really, mm. uh, into this uh, into this industry. So, or this this, uh, this gym, lifestyle, yeah, this, this lifestyle, whatever, yeah. yeah, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So that was um, yeah. I and mean, then very, I mean, I done a um, a, a forty days journey. Um, Revolution, 40, 40 day personal revolution thing, and the, the, the studio was, I was at in Sydney. And, so what is, what is that about? Like it was Baron Pupti's 40 oh. days journey. Uh, so it's a 40 day, uh, you practice it, every you do it every day, and you, you, know, you've got, uh, you, you get together once a week, and you've oh, got okay. some inquiry questions, and you meditate five minutes the first week, 10 minutes the next week, for six weeks, and that was great. It was really, really, um, yeah, and on that training, on that, sorry, on that little course, the owner of the studio, Duncan Duncan Peak, he mentions, oh, you know, the the, the our two hundred hour training is a great little uh, training mm-hmm. to learn more about yoga if you're interested in more about yoga, and that resonated with me. And by the end of that course, I'd signed up for the training. It was under him as well. It he was, was under him. Leading it. Yeah, it was the second training, so he he led the whole thing. Okay. Uh, and it was it was great. And Baron Batiste was his sort of teacher, although he came from an, an Ashtanga background, yeah. but he he sort of Baron sort of inspired him to. To, to, to do that and I uh, so I'd done their training um, and uh, that was in 2007 I think it was okay the training. and I um, the uh, I mean I was absolutely the worst person on the training <laughs> there was 14 people on there some of them had already been teaching yoga right. a lot of them had already been teaching fitness huh. um, I'd been you know uh, I'd been doing personal training but that was just one on one and I was only doing it for a short period of time so um, that was uh, I went in there, but I had a lot of a, a lot of enthusiasm. I mean, I loved to practice. I knew what it done for me. It resonated for me. Um, how, was, long, how long were you practicing yoga before you decided to take 
to embark on the TT? Did you embark on the TT? It would be, it was, it was un, it'd probably be under a year, but it'd be, a, um, yeah, so that was, that was July and I was, so yeah, I was, I was finished, con- I was finished by August. <coughs> you were very consistent with the, the practice, right? Yeah, I was yeah, there every, every day, day yeah. every single day. <laughs> and this was, were you still working at the same time? I was doing personal training at that oh, point. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I didn't go back into that industry yeah. in, in Sydney. Yeah, I was, okay. I was doing it in a gym there in, in Sydney and, um, and continued to do that. Let's um, continue with the timeline. So then, yeah. so around the 30s, you did your 200 hours and then what doors opened up from there on? So from there on, I, I left the training um, and two weeks later, someone called me, a lady who was, and she wasn't her, a friend of hers who was on, who was on the training. Um, she called me on a Saturday afternoon. I was at Coogee Beach in mm. Sydney, which is down, and she called me and said, oh, can you cover a class for me at four oh. o'clock? And I was like, I had, you know, never, I would taught a few friends, but I never got a class. And uh, this was like midday, 12 o'clock. And um, I was like, yes, hour. yes, I'll go. <laughs> so I just like, I was so... Oh, so you were excited to teach? I was so excited, Whoa, yeah. okay. So I went out to Lyca. It was a women's gym in Lyca. And um, went into the gym and um, the women were all sitting there and it was about 40... If it's, if it's a women's gym, that the, the, the guys, uh, you still... A guy instructor is still allowed there? Yeah, well, oh, somehow yeah. I was in there teaching. Okay. <laughs> it was crunch fitness. Oh. It was a women's gym at that point in Lyca in, mm. in, in, in Sydney. And the... So we're in there to teach the class, and I I had a sequence, so I knew the sequence that they gave me at the training. It's this kind of a set sequence. So I knew it inside out. I practiced myself. I taught a few folks. So I had no fear about uh, forgetting the sequence or being short in time or over time. I knew it inherently in my, in my body, and I I practiced um, uh, teaching on the, on, the, on on some friends and whatnot. But this is my first official class after after the training. Um, so I went in there to teach the class and I went in there and I stood up and, you know, welcomed, my, welcomed them and they all laughed because of the accent. It was stronger back then, mm-hmm. if you can imagine, but that would be like. So uh, I went in there and taught them and, and it's a 60 minute class. Yeah. And at the end of the class, I, um, I put them in Shivasana. I had a music playing just in Shivasana, we played music. And it was a, I looked at the, 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 the women lying in Shivasana and I was like, wow, something's different. And it's like, it was like, like the anxiety had gone from me. It was like, I mean, if you remember your first yoga class, what it was, I mean, what it was like. It was like, yeah, yeah, it was just like in there, and at the end of the class, I was just looking at them, and I'm like, wow, I was, I wasn't saying, I wasn't speaking at that point, and I'm like, wow, they're just different, and the the, the, the anxiety and the stress of life wasn't wasn't there for that for that mm-hmm. you know that five minutes, and I was sitting at the front of the room, and there was tears coming down my eyes. So it's like wow, and the uh, I can feel it now when yeah. I think about it. And the um, I heard the music coming to an end, and I'm like, I better get myself together here. <laughs> and um, got myself together, <laughs> took the motor shavasana, and you know, three arms and namaste and yeah. thank you, and off the went. And um, I was like, wow. I, was, I remember driving back to my house that day. I was like, wow, I was so I was so moved by the whole mm-hmm. the whole process. So, um, and then a week later, a friend of mine asked me to cover a class for, there was, they were doing, there's a bunch of women doing um, uh, platies and they wanted me to, wonder if I could uh, do uh, yoga for them. So I started doing yoga for them, I started doing that weekly and then I started teaching in the gym I was in. So within like, within a month after my class, I was teaching about five, six classes mm. a week. And then within three months, it would be up about eight classes a week. Um, and it was like that for maybe a couple of years, and then it went, you know, we uh, started teaching a lot more, and um, yeah, it, uh, I was still doing the personal training, or the, I, was, I was doing more holistic lifestyle coaching at that point, which coupled with uh, with my yoga. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was how I got into the journey, that's how I got into uh, to yoga, and it was just, um, it was really more inspiration yeah. than than education to be honest but then my 200 hour training and wow. I learned a lot but it was like I was just it was my own practice my mm. own what it was doing for me yeah. I wanted to share that you know? yeah, so yeah that's true I was compelled to share I had, I had to share that nice. so um, yeah hmm interesting <laughs> does Mel know the story? Uh, I'm sure she, she knows. does yeah, she's probably okay. her yeah yeah yeah. Huh. yeah and okay so then from Six classes to eight classes, from eight classes to ten, and so on and so on, and then eventually full time teaching take took over. Yeah, and I mean, I yeah. started. I started to teach. I um, myself and two other friends opened a, a little um, 
boutique sort of fitness centre in uh, in Crow's Nest in, in, north, in the north shore of Sydney, and we um, we were all we've done uh, this this uh, holistic lifestyle coaching, which was a check the Czech Institute in San Diego. So um, we were all certified for their mm-hmm. calling was a level four practitioner. I just an exercise coach in the HLC, which is holistic lifestyle coaching. Jeff was an exercise physiology and, uh, physiologist, and he had done the level three. I was just, a, you know, had done the, the, the base level ones of their training. So we all had the same kind of philosophy in there. Um, I'd done yoga there, and I'd done quite a bit of coaching with, with, with people. Um, and uh, so, so I, was, I was doing that. And, I, and interesting, I always tell this in my teacher trainings, actually. I was, uh, for people wanting to start out as a yoga teacher, um, I was teaching in a gym um, across the road from, uh, from the, the studio. And um, I, one day this lady asked me, she, she asked, was asking me all these questions. And I'm like, well, what's the questions about? I couldn't, couldn't follow it. And then she's like, oh, it's my, my, my husband. I'm wondering, he, he, he's, you know, he's, he's basically a CEO of a company. And he's got, um, he's got to go back to university. From, and he's, he's in his 50s now and he's completely uninspired to go back there. And life is you know, coming down on him and, um, and she says, and you were sharing about your journey into yoga, what you done before. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would just little snippets in the class of sharing. And she says, I was wondering, could you, you know, could you do any form? I'm like, yeah, well, I do coaching. Yeah. So he came, I'll never forget, he came into to the, the, to, to the studio one morning and he was wondering who he was going to meet. And then, of course, I showed up and he was, um, he was saying, we got on great. And he, he was, he was amazing. He, he, I'd done coaching with him and then we ended up, he ended up doing yoga. And, you know, he was the one that changed their house, got, got them, you know, organic food. Um, oh. uh, it was a major transformation in the, in the family. And um, I realized at that point, wow, my, my clients for my, my holistic lifestyle coaching are right in front of me. The women's husbands. Oh. And then all of a sudden, I had, a, I had you know at one point I had about seven or eight guys um, coming in, men coming in mm-hmm. to and I was working with them each week, once a week, sometimes twice a week, giving them just you know whether it's exercise or stretching programs and um, diet and lifestyle, uh, so Kate, you know like just had a whole. I still do that now. I don't do it anymore, um, but I, you know I used to. That's what I. Yeah, done, it, yeah. my main thing. Yeah, I bring some of it into the teacher training around the, mm-hmm. the, the assessments of the posture okay. model. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I just, just full time teaching. Looking, it. looking back on this journey, yeah, from maybe not so far, but like say from the start of your first class mm-hmm. when you looked at all the people, yeah. and you got a bit more emotional until say now. Who were you then, and who are you now? Uh, I mean, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest shift has been I was. I was quite self-conscious. Um, you'd never see it. You'd never see it in a... a from the outside looking the in, outside you, won't, you won't see it, in. yeah. So, uh, and then, uh, you mean the yoga practice, it's just been a, just an organic shift for me. I became much more self-aware mm. and less self-conscious. So what, less what I want people to think about and then just more okay. in tune with what's going on for That's me. great. I, I make sense. I like that yeah. answer and I can see that in a way, you know what I mean? Like, you do give up a presence of not that you don't care what other people think, but you you you're comfortable in your own space. Mm, you know. Yeah. I mean, cool. I was if I was if I was the example would be like you know when they're finished playing sport on a Saturday evening, I would go into the the pub in Scotland or the mm. bar in Scotland, and my friends would be there. If my friends were all in there, and I would come in and I had no alcohol and come in, and I would I would walk in and I would shout, hey, how, "How are you?" And I would be like, "Yeah, I'm good." And I would be like, they would never see, but inside I was like cringing a little. Bit. Mm. Um, never mind if it was a, a lady or a woman over there that I wanted to go and speak to. It would be cringing. Much as I would do these things, but I was still like tense and, and anxious. Okay. So, um, so from from that too, and then I would have a few drinks, uh, and I would be like on top of the, you know, I'd be the mm. king of the bar. I'd be like, you know, speaking to everyone. I was so confident at that mm. point. You know, the, the anxiety would drop away, and then um, definitely with you know uh, like. Uh, that was with me all the way through my twenties, really. And then I, um, I was, I would kind of learn how to deal with it, but it was always there. It kind of it followed me around. Um, and then in my, when I started the practice of yoga, there was no pinnacle moment, no pinnacle time. But at some point, there was a shift. I'm like, wow. Yeah. I was aware, like, if I had some alcohol, I would slap, and I would be like, I was like, oh, I would get all uptight, hmm. even when I had a few drinks. I'd be like, so it spun around. Hmm. Turned around, went went the other way, and it was like, to now that, you know, I don't actually. I mean, I'll have still have a drink, 
But you, still, you don't need that. I don't. To, I don't yeah. have that drink in a month. Just, yeah. I'm just not really interested in it. I don't like how it makes me feel, especially in the next day, even yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you know, if, a few folk have said, "Oh, you know, that's that's probably that's just maturing." And I'm like, "Well, no. If I look around, you know, if I look around, if I look back home and see it, even Some my people, father yeah. and, and, and stuff, it's like they, they, we we st- we still carrying that these an- the anxiety." And um, and for me it shifted. I was I'm comfortable speaking with people, and you know, I've spoken in front of three hundred people. And, um, I love it. I really enjoy going out there and sharing this this, this message of of, um, of yoga and um, awareness. I think and awareness. It's aware- awareness. Awareness is the first step. Awareness it's, and then acceptance. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned how there was no pivotal moment during mm-hmm. the yoga practice where like oh, okay now my life has changed because there's no such thing mm-hmm. it is through the practice the daily practice the showing up every day then you start to build a little bit more awareness and through that awareness comes strength in different areas of your life yeah. awareness of like yeah I don't need alcohol to feel a certain way yeah I don't need to care about what other people think and and, and you just mature and you evolve with the help of that awareness which comes from the practice yes absolutely yeah. no, I would say like you know uh, yoga step one is awareness step mm. two is acceptance of what Ooh, you're aware of you know? okay, and in that okay. moment in that moment of the acceptance uh, it's immediate energetic like ah uh, there's something opens in you there's a release you know and then that and when that release comes there's an immediate maturing so maturity comes to the to the person like the awareness the acceptance and then ah uh, and then there's a maturing and then there's a clarity and it's like it's you know it's like there's it's like, okay wow there's a, there's a whole other world out here, mm. you know. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful journey. Mm. <laughs> okay, um, moving on. So, what are some of the challenges you faced when you first started teaching, and what are the challenges you face now as a senior teacher? What's the word for it? Yeah, uh, a more no, experienced yeah, teacher. Yeah, yeah, it's not. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, oh man, so it's great questions. I mean, uh, at the at the start, it would be. Um, it was right at the start of the curve of yoga, really, of vinyasa yoga and whatnot. It was back in 2007, uh, 2008. Um, so there was a lot of opportunities. There was a lot of people. That I didn't have to go searching for for yoga classes. People, it was just, just word of mouth. Oh. And they just kind of came. Um, but the, um, at the start, the, um, I suppose it was... Um, Wow, that's such a good, good question. This one. Um, I mean, there was, there was there's been like many challenges. I mean, as, as far as like the transition from you know one career to another, mm. that was definitely a challenge. The financial challenge. The, the fear start, of stepping into something new. It wasn't the fear of stepping into something new. I, I jumped into that. I just, oh, okay. Because well, I had some money behind me yeah. from my previous job, but you know that I started to do a lot of trainings, and courses, and learning, and whatnot. And that money soon disappeared. You know, so and um, or just started to get shot, and it was you know, by that point I was making money. I was I was, do, I was doing it, but we had rents for the studio I worked in, um, and all the money sat, you know, and I was like, wow, and I was like, how do I? Oh, this is getting interesting, mm-hmm. getting chat, you know. So that was de- a definite challenge, that transition, and just um, yeah, that letting go mm. of um, a certain way. It's not like I was. Spending a lot of money, I was I was spending it all on on. on what well, you needed to spend on, a, yeah, yeah. on, on developing myself. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I done a lot of uh, sort of trainings on, on coaching and, and, and developing and, and being able to stand in front of people and speak and um, different trainings. But so that that, that was. Um, Do you was, have a fear of like speaking in front of a class? Um, yeah, I, I had it, but I didn't really. Once I was in there, I was fine. Oh, yeah. I was okay. okay. Um, before before I, did, I mean, I I. I yeah, so the, just the, the, developing myself as a, I suppose as a teacher. So I mean, one of the, one of the challenges I had was I I I, I did learn, I learned a lot in, in teaching in gyms. I was teaching in yoga studios as well, so I was teaching in gyms. So I could I could practice a lot. You could it's a great place to go and get going in gyms. I was teaching in studios, but smaller studios. So I wasn't really teaching in the bigger studios, mm-hmm. like where I learned my teacher training and different things. I didn't even, I didn't even really approach them. Mm-hmm. So I, I was definitely hiding at some level. I was hiding at some level. And that level would be just I did, I don't, I don't know enough. I haven't, I know, I don't know enough about anatomy. I don't know enough about um, it's a very philosophy. Common, yeah, yeah. A very so, common thing. Yeah, I knew that. Was, absolutely, and it was, I knew at some level it was valid. I needed to develop myself in that. I did study a lot of anatomy. I learned from Simon Borg Olivia in Sydney, and um, I learned a lot through Paul Czech. That's where I learned most of it. 
uh, and developed that and my own and learned my own way of learning it. Um, so that, that that came that came through you know just just teaching and learning and, and doing trainings, and learning. But the um, the the ability to go and um, uh, like even the Sanskrit and learning all the different what you know was always so it was always I always felt oh I'm not enough. Mm. You know, and you know, of course, we're enough. But you know, I had that. I definitely had that. Um, so working through that, um, and working through that was just practice. I just kept showing up and teaching. Mm-hmm. I, would, oh, I had the yoga sutras, and I got that from the teacher training, and the Bhagavad Gita. And I had these books. I just read through these books, and um, I started to learn a lot from. Uh, I read uh, Richard Freeman's book and. Um, different one who was good in Sanskrit and, and, and I just really learnt it and we went done a few uh, done a couple of trainings in Sanskrit um, and then teachers were doing it so I kind of yeah I, I just kept kept showing up yeah. kept practicing kept learning from other teachers and then it just sort of came you know and, I, and then it came it wasn't really an issue I just like I didn't have it, it, it came, became that if I don't know I don't know it's just okay wow. it's okay not to know and then Interesting. I, I always say to the start of my training, I say to, say to the guys, says, if anyone comes to you and tells you they know everything about yoga, you must run in the opposite direction. It's because it's a huge, no such thing. Yeah. No such thing. It's, just, it's just you get what you need from it, from the practice, and it's um, it's, it's it's great. You know, and I've, I know since that I've probably opened myself up and learned a lot about it, and um, yeah, a, a lot more sort of stuck stuck for me and, and um, yeah so that, that, that was definitely one of the challenges um, also I mean you know I mean in my earlier days it's interesting people came people came to the class you know so I remember do, doing one in Sydney there was about 20 people would come to the class I mean within a few months there was like 80 people coming like 90 people coming to this class um, on a Sunday morning yeah. so when I first took, took over the class it was, I was like wow people just come because it was like it was fun and it was like I was moving the people yeah. I was speaking to their values. I was sharing. I don't know. I just I just had this ability to share in a classroom. I love to share mm. philosophy about yoga, about in simple ways, really, really simple ways, and um, yeah, just moving the room. But one of the main things was really like just speaking to the people's values that was in front of, and that um, you know that kind of made sense to the people, and then, and then people just kept showing up, and it was like wow, it's. Um, I know I was by no means a skillful teacher at yeah. that point. I, you know, I was just out of the box and full of enthusiasm, but you know, grounded enthusiasm. Yeah. I wasn't. It wasn't over the top. It was just like loving the practice and sharing that what it done for me. And they were on my journey, and it was. Yeah. Um, it was you know, they taught me a lot. As they still do the students. Yeah. I was. It's interesting because like I was expecting a little bit more um, practical. Uh, uh, things that you face but then like your response is quite interesting because you you come from a place where like okay yes you're a teacher but then because you're so new at the act of at the, at the teaching you don't you can't you can't you can only teach from your experience from what yeah. you know so then how do I get how do I get out of this how do I solve this oh, I need to fill up my my cup with mm-hmm. all this knowledge all this experience then I can go out and teach and to give a little bit more authentically because I know I come from a place of knowing that's why I teach you can't teach from a place of not knowing so that's interesting yeah I mean I I I mean you could go I mean basically you go to school and learn and then take the test in real life you learn and then take the test Mm. sorry the other way around in real life (laughs) in school you go you learn and then you take the test in real life you take the test and then you learn oh Sorry, right, right. That, but that's interesting. Like, yeah. That's the way I found with you. Trial by fire, in a yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've done a two hundred old training. I was yeah. done in three months, and I was out there teaching. Yeah, and I was oh. like, you know, it was I was teaching. It was nothing crazy. I was teaching. It was, say it was movement and breath, and um, you know, it was like, and of course, there's things now I look back might have been doing back then. I don't do now or change things up. The more I've learned about sequencing and, and stuff, I've changed it up. But I mean, it's like it got. It, it was just get out there and get going. You know, what's what's your teaching philosophy? Um, <laughs> the philosophy is for teaching is really to I mean the two things I have is to inspire uh-huh. and empower and to inspire is to get, bring the motivation to bring it's, I just see it as really it's, just, it's my meaning or my association to these, mm. to these words 
is to inspire us to, to get to inspire them to 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 it's the why it's like, like like let's go let's inspire the room let's move them let's connect people let's get them get them you know get get, get them interested and then to empower us to, to uh, make that shift inside yeah. that internal shift so um not to tell them the answer but to try and inspire something within them so i call it an inductive learning it's when they have come up with the learning within themselves that's my definition of empowerment mm-hmm. they um they, they feel the pose themselves to so take them you know like when i teach an asana when i te- teach them how to do it I, uh, it's really simple two steps two steps to do it the first step is tell them the pose get them in the pose give them some basic alignment that's the first step the second step is get their eyes on one point or something that I don't address to. Get them to breathe, to listen to the breath, or to tune into the breath, whatever way, wherever they are, and then, to, then to awareness to feel. And then from their point, it's just like steel sukha. It's all about steel sukha. Just finding them to get steel sukha, mm-hmm. and then speaking to that. And then they, they have to find that. They to, and I, I hold them accountable and, and tease them and play with them and hold space for them and. Uh, you know, like, can you be supple? Are you, are you hardening too much? You know, what's your wrist? Is your eyes, is your eyes hard? Are they dreamy? Are they, are they there? Are they meditating? You know? So, it's re- my philosophy is very simple for teaching. It's like, it's, it's, um, there's the, to inspire and empower. I mean, you know, if it's there, maybe drop a little inquiry question in there at times. Some days it's there, some days it's not. Um, I definitely like to, I used to do a lot of bring a theme in, and I still do. I think it's a great way to, to, to teach mm. um, and then just tie that in and weave that in. I was always kind of naturally good at that for some reason. I just kind of intuitively naturally done that. But um, yeah, so there really is just to, to my, 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 and my outcome for every class. I mean, I have my own intentions for each class, of course, but my general outcome from rushing to a class and I haven't got time to do that is always to, empower, to ground and empower the students. Mm. It's always I want the students to leave grounded and empowered, and I'm always moving them. I always want them to leave in a state of pratyahara or moving towards pratyahara. So they're they're more so they leave the studio and they can hear the birds in the trees. They can feel the stone under their foot when they leave, uh, not just straight into the day. I'm always looking. That's my my philosophy really. In, in, in actual, however, I can do that. Whatever I've got to do to weave that in. I'll, I'll do I'll do that. Um, so I follow the eight limbs really. I mean, it's really my philosophy. It's um, the eight limbs, and it's like you know the the, late, the, the latter ones are um, things that happen to you. Mm-hmm. The earlier ones are things we do. So um, doing doing my best to guide people uh, to you know a state of pratyahara uh, over time, or maybe even in the very first class. Um, so yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> what what about your spiritual philosophy? Um, on and off the mat. Yeah, on and off the mat. So again, it's a it's a beautiful question. It's a very used word now, spiritual and whatnot. And in really, your interpretation, I guess. Yeah, in my interpretation. I mean, it's like it really is to um, you know, I mean, to be spirit. I mean, it's awareness. To be spiritual is to have, to have awareness, but it's like and that awareness is to be able to uh, respond. So to take you know, re- another word for responding is to take responsibility. Mm. For respond responsibility is to respond to life as it is mm. in that moment. So uh, that's really that to be my spiritual philosophy is, to, is the ability to be able to respond to life as it's coming, as it's, as it's moving towards you, and not to try and control or run or react. It's just like okay, it's here, and that's a practice, mm. <laughs> especially out off the mat. And that's what I I, I, I see my um, philosophy is. I mean, I, I I see it as you've got the physical. Mm. You've got the emotional, which is the physical, uh, what you feel. The emotional is how you feel. The mental is what's the conversation, and the spiritual is the observer of these three. And we're developing that through um, Stira Sukha. <laughs> or, you know, so, yeah. so always, even in every single pose, like take them, get them in the pose, basic alignment, not overly, sometimes more alignment, some days, some poses, depends on what I'm teaching, what mm. I'm doing. I think it's great alignment, but. Um, and then um, get you know get them. The drishti is the biggest secret in yoga. Drishti. Uh, why? It, it, it concentrates the mind. Right. It's just like for me. I know. I remember Baron Baptiste saying that to me. And I was like, wow, that's so true. Oh. When you get your eyes soft and steady. And I'm not. Um, I mean, I practiced a lot of ashtanga before, and 
they have certain points I'm more I give them a point but it's more something whatever's comfortable for you to put your head I'm not so um, overly dogmatic about where it goes but I like to get I always speak to it and then just get the uh, come into this state of expanded awareness and uh, the mind opens the critical faculty in the mind it opens conscious and unconscious opens and then wow you can shovel in the good stuff for them to transform and change and shift and empower okay Oh, let me me reflect about what this... Okay, that's very interesting. It's a very... um, A practical way of practicing your your philosophy. Like, like say, you you actually turned a philosophy into a practice where it's something that you can actually actively commit to or to do. And that, in a way, keeps guiding you intrinsically yeah I mean the, the practice as well I mean the way I've got the way I have it when I teach it to you know people is, is, is really is this asana medi- uh, pranayama meditation and contemplation you know and that's how I define these words of course asana being the movement the uh, uh, whether, whatever style it's the posture mm. um, pranayama being the um, the breath within the movement and also pranayama seated pranayama just basic stuff um, and then um, meditation meditation being the uh, central point of focus so concentrate the mind um, my own meditation is more um, sort of tantric based it's uh, uh, just on chakras really mm. it's going through the chakras and resolving them and the Paul Grilly stuff I mm. really love his philosophy I've done Vipassana before uh, few times and it's it's I love that I'm more of a feeler type person mm. so I'm definitely much more of a uh, feeling emotional uh, yeah so I, I, I do it's a watch for me if someone's more uh, visual or someone's more auditory so there's different style you got it you got to feel you got to find your one um, but definitely the the and the, you know my pranayama techniques is all banda pranayama mm. uh, to open mm. up the spine to release it and the, the, the seeds of karma and that's a deeper practice but then the, the contemplation is it's the inquiry it can be active or passive contemplation um, active contemplation would be just you know asking yourself a question without needing to know the answer mm. just stepping back from giving the space to come up passive contemplation is just you know at the end of a class you just sit and you contemplate at the end of a meditation you just contemplate what's there what's there for the day yeah. stuff. so I, that's what I teach uh, I teach these four things yeah, so con- condensing it into that, and I feel like that is something that's so in innate in you. And say, oh yeah, let me how how do I phrase a question regarding that? How how do you how do you teach from that place? How do you teach from your truth? Mm. And how do, how do you even find your truth? I, I guess through practice, through the practice, and through actually practicing oh, and the yeah. learning about yourself. That's how you. You sort of uncover these things, but then how do you um, deliver that to a class? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I mean, this is this right. is a big question. This is uh. a, this is the key. That, you know, if you get this, yeah, then you then you everything everything opens everything. up. Everything becomes clear already, right? Yeah. Everything shifts. When mm. You get this. Yeah. Now, um, I was um, at some at some level. I don't know whether I was lucky or whatever it was, but it was like it, it's what worked for me. Mm. Certain philosophy. The having a for me having that base sequence um, mm. helped me I didn't need to think about sequence I got into sequencing I still do love to sequence classes and I got into I went through a spell where it was like oh it was all fancy sequence and, and it was good and I think it's kind of an essential part of growing as a teacher yeah. it's really important to, to bring that in to bring that and learn because that's how you learn um, but my I always say the number one thing will stop you being intuitive in your class is too complex a sequence for two reasons. The first one is you don't remember it. You've yeah, got to uh, be in your head to get it yes. out. The second one is the students don't know it. And you're trying, you might know it really well, but you're trying to get them through it. Oh. So these two things, it's the, it's the two things that will stop you being an intuitive teacher. That's interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting point of view. Yeah, these are, for okay. me anyway, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why I tell. Go on, go on. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that, that's, that's, so when you are, um, you know, when you're in it, when you, I mean, when you can have that, I mean, I don't know if it's how it's for you. You share with me in a minute how, how it was it's for you teaching, but I step into the room and I do have a little thing I do before I go into the room, just to release tension, set intention, 
I'll feel that mm-hmm. I can tap into that. I've also got some other uh, ways of just grounding myself. I can do it really quick. I can actually do it in the room with certain anchors that I can use. Um, so I just go in there and I'm, I'm myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just getting in, going in there and, and having a, a, a framework a serious uh, kind of a framework to teach uh, of, you know, an outline of where I'm going, I can then, I can change, if the class isn't working, if I've got a fiery class, uh, a class with a lot of t- Tadasana cues and a bit of fire in it and going to get them heated up and work them, um, and it's not working, the energy's not in it, I can change it immediately. And it's like, it's, oh, because you sort of know how to, aware and what to adapt at what point. Yeah, and I, I kind of always had that. It's not some I, I definitely learned it and developed it, no question. But I always had that capacity to change something that wasn't working. I always put it down to just having this the sort of eleven series that Baron Baptiste teaches. And these you know, these eleven series you can I bring it into ever bring it into restorative not restorative yoga but to a more of a gentle style, even in a half a style, I can just drop some of the series out. But that framework really worked for me. And I've learned a few different styles of, of doing it, but I've always went back to that one because it's just like it's just it's just a, it works. It works for me. Like it it kind of gives me the gives me a freedom to be able to to give some um, philosophy into the room. And you know, using the elements as well. I mean, I study quite a lot with Rama Prasad in, in Australia. He's an Ayurvedic doctor, and he teaches the elements and um, understanding the elements and how to teach through them. You know, like to have your body in that state and to change state and to uh, teach that way is, is um, uh, allows me to, to share that mm. and I have a little thing called the teacher's compass I call the it compass. I call it the teacher's compass <laughs> yeah I designed it for the teacher training and it's um, <laughs> it's got the in the north it's got the warrior and it's the element of fire so it's the warrior and in the south it's the influential teacher the king and the queen and it's the element of earth um, and then you've got in the in the uh, in the West, you've got the uh, compelling teacher, and it's you know it's the element of air. And in the East, you've got the um, the uh, the healing teacher, the authentic teacher, the element of water. So I use them, and I teach them, I teach them this way. And then in the center, you've got ether, the element of ether, which is the soul. And it's like it's really what you want to be in there. You want to be teaching from that space. But you've got you know some people are more dynamic. Some people are more impactful in teaching. It's a natural way of teaching. Some people are quite grounded, very good with asking questions, philosophy. Some people are more watery, very nurturing. Some people are very dynamic and sequencing, and really sharp minds. And so we're one of them. We're usually one of them, um, or a couple of them. Um, and you don't want to change that in the teacher. You don't want to change a person. You want that, you want that to, you know, whatever you are, you want to, like, okay, this is, but you know you've got to bring these other ones in. Mm. you got, you, like, you can't be... If you can't be too fine, you can't be too... Yeah, yeah, if you're an impactful teacher, I always remember I was doing a class in Sydney and there was a friend of mine, a little American guy, and he's a great teacher, a great little teacher, and he wanted some feedback and um, he was in there, his, his, um, his theme was compassion, and he was in the class and... Um, the start of the class, he moved the room, and I was like, well, I'm like, wow, this is so good, so good. It was like amazing, you know, moving the room and getting everyone going. The whole room was there, he had them all going. And then it came towards the end of the class, and we're in Half Pigeon or something like that. He's like, he's still marching around the room, shouting about compassion. <laughs> and the feedback was, you know, like, you know, just get down on one knee, get down on one knee, and, or, or get low and speak about mm. compassion when we're in our hips so you know it's like, like so interesting yeah so moving using your body and your physiology to, to mimic I never thought about this eh? I never thought about like cause because I, I, I say in that class I would be wanting to be as high as possible to see mm-hmm. what's going on everywhere yeah and then that that presence alone might be um uh too overpowering to some people who are let's say if we're in Pigeon now and I'm zooming over them talking about like shouting at their you know yeah. like sing deeper or something like that engage your engage your thighs or whatever yeah I mean it's it's, it's definitely I mean it's just a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tool really. yeah it's a different thing to, 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 yeah. to think do, about that you never yeah. think about it that you can actually use in your class like, I mean you're not you'll, you'll naturally do it I mean yeah. he wasn't as he wasn't as he wasn't impactful specific, yeah, as he, he was yeah. in, in the warriors but he was still a little bit so he, yeah. was a, he was an impactful teacher and you would never want to take that away from him. That was his oh. talent. So it's just, but just how do we bring this element in? 
to at that point in the class or certain points. So there's there's contrast to the class, there's range there. It's not it's not all up the top or you know the the, the the nurturing teacher, the water element, the person that's quite round and very watery and nurturing. You know, like what what are they going to do in Crescent Lunch at the start of the class? So they're just going to like, okay, you can put your knee down, you can do it. No, you need to, they need to be in power. They need to they need to be commanded. They need energy at that point. Um, and naturally these teachers will gravitate and find their own Style, but any style, no matter, even in a yin class, you call it. It's there needs to be, there needs to be some kind of impact or clarity, even just in your language, to be able to get them in and out of the pool or whatever it is, you know. And then, so there needs to be that range. So, how do we find that? How can we bring that out in the teacher or you know, myself? I worked on it on myself, or constantly still working on that. Yeah. These 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 elements to, um, to bring to be more rounded. It never, you never stop learning this. Yeah. This, 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 this You're always the student. Oh man, it's like the, the teach you so much. It's like I'm so, so grateful and so privileged to be doing this as a career and learning from these people that come in and these students that come in and day in, day out, week in, week out. It's like, wow. Um, okay. <laughs> Seeing like, so you've been in the yoga industry, yoga world for a long time. Yeah. Where do you see the yoga world now, and where do you see it going? Mm, yeah. Because um, let's, let's say, uh, if I might chime in. Yeah, go for it. Uh, there's a big shift in the world now, mm. considering the things that are happening. Yeah. How is that going to impact the yoga industry? Yeah. You know, that, that as well is something to think about, because we had a bit of a scare, like, mm. with everything closing down, and then... I thought that Zoom was going to be the future of all things fitness. Mm -hmm. And then knowing that I don't like Zoom classes, I personally don't like it. I don't. I feel that some people like it, some people like the convenience of it, but I there's a huge disconnect for me. Yeah. I'm not in the room, I'm not with people, I'm not in the same energy, we're not moving in the same vibration. Mm -hmm. So, and then my home is just distracting on its own. So then, is this going to be the future of how things are for now? Is Zoom going to be the, the thing? So then I, then I lost interest in yoga because of that. There was no space to, to commune to. Um, I don't know, just, just my thoughts. But then like, how, yeah. what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I taught a few Zoom classes. Mm. Uh, it was actually wasn't too bad. I didn't mind it too bad. But I mean, completely, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I like to be in the room mm. uh, with the students, whether I'm practicing or whether I'm teaching. Um, the, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's definitely opened up. To many, uh, many more people do Zoom, and some people are, you know, more drawn to that and, and, and doing well. I think a lot of teachers actually like to combine it, oh, okay, uh, which yeah. is a good, good way. And I can completely understand if you're a teacher wanting to, <clears throat> to do to do both. You can reach an audience, and you can share, and you can, um, yeah, make it make a difference. So I think it's, um, I think it's good. You know, uh, what, 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 uh, that that opened up. For, for teachers and for students to access and um, you know there's maybe other teachers you've heard about in different parts of the world you can oh, go back to class okay, you know okay. um, Vinnie Marino in, in LA I've never done his class before and uh, I, I, he had started doing them I haven't done it yet but I would like to go and do yeah. his class and he um, so it's okay, an opportunity okay. to go and do that that's um, true that's so it, it, yeah it, 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 it gives you that um, I know for me I, I, on Yoga Glow I've done some with Richard Freeman, I was I, I done a little bit on there, but but I just still didn't like it. I done some workshops with Richard Freeman before, and I, I love I love his philosophy and his style, and what he teaches, and the way he does it. And it's amazing. But um, on Yoga Glow, and I just I just check out. I'm not really um, so yeah. So it doesn't really work for me, but it still got me exposure and learn mm. from, uh, from that. But where where I see it going in in, in the future, I mean. Um, it's definitely much more diverse now, so there's definitely a lot of the practices going into more specifics. So it could be into mental health, it could be into certain uh, yoga therapies. Uh, there's big, huge opportunities there. Um, the, as far as the vinyasa scene, um, I think it's. I don't think it's going to drop off. I think it's going to stay because it's definitely the curve has evened out. No question. Over the last ten years, it was a huge growth. Now it's kind of evened out a bit. Um, my own, my own take on it is, is if it's if it's just the asana, if you're just doing it for the asana, that it's it, it'll be short lived. It, it will be. It's just the way it is. It's just the way we are because mm -hmm. it's physical. You know, and uh, I'm not saying the, um, you know, the asana is all 
uh, physical, but if it's just for the physical benefits of the asana, it will be short-lived. You know, you, you will get bored with it. You, absolutely. If you've got a deeper connection with it and you feel the shift, um, something shifts inside you. For instance, if you're, you know, you're sharing a little bit of philosophy, and you're, you know, you're you're teaching the technique, not just the pose. You're teaching the technique. What's what's the technique you're sharing? Concepts. I've, yeah, I've, I mean, I'm sharing a dristy point and a breathing. You know, I'm not even sharing. I say, I always say, like, ujjayi breath will find you. Just you Ooh. need to listen to the sound of the breath and you find. You don't need to. It's not. You don't need to think about the technique. Just get the breath moving. Start to listen and start to refine the sound of the breath and it'll 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 come running to you. Um, so there's my techniques yeah. <laughs> and then the awareness to drop in and that, that's, that's what I'm teaching every class I'm like so excited to teach the students this and they don't even know that's what I'm teaching them <laughs> it's like so it's, it's an interesting but that's yeah. what gives me because I know the power of that pratyara you know like going into meditation if you've had a, not had an experience of deeper meditation then you might not but I mean I've had a few deep you know like um, yeah especially my earlier days of meditation Got, you know, it's like wow. Even now, I uh, you know I meditate every day, and um, it's my it's my main practice really. Um, but I, the power of the asana is like it's, it's, it's phenomenal. The asana is just one small part of what yoga is, and yeah. it's the easiest part to get into. People Absolutely. start with the asana, yeah. but they don't end with the asana. They transcend the asana. The the class, the practice, the hour here is to bring you a little bit more awareness a little mm-hmm. bit more connection yeah. and with that connection you step outside off the mat that's where you practice the real yoga yeah. what you do off once you come here whether the the physical aspect of it will teach you different things if you're forcing yourself if you're causing yourself pain you're not practicing yoga anymore first rule already is not, is not you're not being kind to yourself if you're leading with the ego and not with the breath that's also something that's going to punish you um, yeah and then people start they come for the practice the asana but they don't they after a while after a year of practice you, you start to know you, you feel that you feel yes. that shift something is different already and then you no longer come to to work out you don't longer come to sweat you come to to connect to the people to breathe to connect to yourself to remind yourself who you are yeah yeah definitely no, no question I mean I even I can see my in my early days going back to what you asked before um, getting caught up a little bit in that, making it more a mm. little bit more of a workout for students, you know, like because it was people liked the dynamics, the flow, but then I was losing the yoga, I was losing the techniques, because yeah. it was all about just the, the sequence and moving people and getting them sweating and the hardest class you can give them, you know, and then eventually through my own practice I start to feel, you know, my, my earlier days of vinyasa I was doing all the fancy poses mm. and then all of a sudden I had a bucket load of injuries and I already came to yoga with a load of injuries <laughs> and the body was like, oh, you know, SI joints are stable, my <clears throat> left shoulder which I buffed up when I was younger was there and my right hip and I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting into all these poses but I'm like, oh, it's like I'm not ready to go into these poses, you know, and uh, eventually, you know, we unwound all the way back and um, started to stay have that foundational practice and understanding the body and listening to the body and um, you know really tuning into it. I mean mm-hmm. the, the reality is uh, if you if you come to yoga for strength and for the workout you'll injure yourself. You're at the end range of motion. You'll, 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 no matter who you are you'll injure yourself. Guaranteed. The other thing is if you just come and just it's all about just energy and that, you'll stagnate. You get stagnant. You know? When you come with a focus and a clear intention then you access your power. Like it's there. It comes. The two come together, and then it's like, okay, you know, we're, we're focused. We're conscious. We're, you know, I mean, we're, we're here. We're, 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 you know, like how and how do we stay here? You yeah. know, of course, we lose it again. We come back to it. And it's we, the practice. Mm-hmm, it's the practice. Yeah, the prize in the practice. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> your teaching, your teacher training, your training, is titled Journey into Consciousness. What does that mean? How did you come up with that? Um, yeah, it's just, it's actually just on my, I put it as a little tagline on my website, it was on my website. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, um, yeah, it's, I, uh, um, I mean, really, studying the Yoga Sutras mm. is, um, I mean, it takes time to get into that stuff. People come and learn, but it takes time. But you just keep, 
you keep, I mean, I remember the first time I read it, I read it from a teacher training. I had no idea what was in there. Mm. I read the whole thing, I'm like, oh, nothing resonated. I don't remember anything from that first time I read it. And then, you know, through the practice, I mean, just picking the book up, opening the book, reading something, it started to resonate over time through the, as my practice oh, developed, right. I started, and then, and now it's like, wow, this, this book's just, you know, it's like it's everything in there. Yeah. And uh, same with, same with the, the Bhagavad Gita, you know, the story in there. It's like, oh well, my, it's, it's like, it's, it's life. It's life. And um, I mean, yoga is the science of consciousness. Mm. So, um, and understanding the, the slip of the mind or the mistake that's being made in there, when, you, when I start to see that and study that, it's like, wow, this is, this is everything here. This is the whole thing. So, um, yeah, it's a journey into consciousness. I mean, my, you know, like, for me, I, I, I say, like, love is consciousness becoming aware of itself. And that's yoga as well. When it becomes aware of itself, it's like, ah, oh, it's there. So the work really resonated with for me and, um, and understanding that. I mean, it can, it's a, for me, it's a journey into it. It's not like some, it's not like I'm there. Mm. You know, you have a glimpse of it and then you're, you, know, you, don't, you don't see it for a few years. <laughs> and then it comes back again and then you go through a little spell. And it's, and, but, you know, you were bringing, raising our level. And I think, you know, um, globally, it's an interesting conversation where consciousness is at as a global, as a, as a, you know, on a global scale. So everything um, is connected. Ev- everything's connected. It's woven through everything. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's whatever you want to call it. It's the intelligence that's woven through everything. It's the create, you know, it's the creator that's the doing the creation, yeah. you know, like this, you know, it's Shiva Shakti, Shiva mm. is the creator and Shakti is the creation and the energy that's going on. So, yeah, the weaving of the two. Mm. And it's, you know, it comes, so it's really coming through from the Yoga Sutras and, um, and my, just my understanding of it yeah. at this stage, at this stage, it changed, you know, it's like, I, I, I'm, no, I'm not an expert on the Yoga Sutras. But I love to study it, and listen about it, and, and read it, and contemplate on it. And, you know, my, my life's quite simple, really. <laughs> it's just to contemplate on some of these <laughs> concepts and really ponder on them and see how it. I mean, when I have these experiences, I'm like, oh, okay, wow. So yeah, and I'm definitely more ether type, body type, which is more um, ethers of space. Um, it's kind of my makeup. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, so that so it really resonates for me. Okay. <laughs> so that's really how it's, that's why I've got that kind of tagline. And, um, that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's, let's take a step away from yoga for a bit. Mm. Not too far. This is a question from Mel. She oh. asks, <laughs> how has becoming a father changed you? Oh, um, wow. Well, you know, First of all, be, be cut, like I'm, I'm 47 now, so um, can't tell. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so it's like I mean, I came, I became a father later in life, really. Huh. The um, and it's something when I was, I think of when I was young, I thought it's something will happen. Mm-hmm. You see, you know, you still become a father, you know. And then you know, I, I, you know, I got older, and I was like, you know, and I was like, well, you know, if it happens, it happens. You know, I was into yoga at this point. So, um, but then when it came and um, came around, it's like it's. It's, uh, I mean, they are just phenomenal teachers, mm. children. I mean, they are, mm-hmm. they're just like, you know, and it's um, the level of accountability that the children give me. It's just like, oh, you know, if you think you're, for me anyway, if you think your wife gives you a lot, wait till you, you know, your <laughs> girlfriend or your yeah. partner or your work or, you know, your, 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 even your health. Mm. But for me, it's like the, the, the level of accountability that child, like Monroe and Navy give me. It's just like it's crazy because no matter what I do, they're doing it within a split second. You know, if I come out the car, I was trying to get Monroe's uh, jacket off and come off the, the bus the other day. There, the school bus a few months ago, and he did a little jacket on for the seatbelt, and I was trying to undo the buckle to get the jacket off, and he Monroe's like, ah, stop it, That's, ah, hurry up, you know, and I was like, and then he took it off, and I'm like, oh my god, that's me. I do that. I get impatient when I'm doing something, and he just mimicked it straight back to me. You know, and then um, uh, so he gets out the car, and it's like, ah, I'm like this is what I do. So you know, and then Navy, you know, things I do. He the dog, we got a dog at the house, and sometimes the dog, the dog had a, 
um, got a hold of a bone, a chicken bone one day, we're feeding it, and it, it, it came and it was eating eat the bone and it was it ran away with it and I was trying to get the bone off and I was I kind of chased the dog to try and get it back because mm. it went away with all of it or the whole the whole bag not just the one bone it was supposed to get and um, I shouted at the dog and I came from a farm so we have a different you know the dogs are always outside and next minute Navy is shouting at the dog and trying to kick the dog and <laughs> it's like you know I'm like whoa it's out after you yeah. it's like just immediately not even next week just like right there mm. Uh, so, um, but then what did this? What like so then? How? What does he teach you? What? What? What was the lesson at that point uh, for you? To be more present, to be more present, to watch my actions, right. to watch my language, to watch my how I say word things, how I phrase things, how I gesture, how I see things. And that's like, sort of like they the pick yeah. up everything, like every single thing they pick up, and it's like it's the mirror. It's like boom, here right. you go, Blair. Here's who you are. Here's your spiritual practice right here. Look at yourself. Wow. And I'm like, well, oh, okay, you know. Of course, we know the key, ma- the key ingredient of of a spiritual practice is humility. Yeah. You know, you've got, if you've got any humility, you've got nothing. So it takes a lot of humility to, you know, and when they trigger you and uh, to stay there and, and just keep boundaries for them, to keep to give them, make sure you hold firm boundaries and mm-hmm. um, to do it. So it's a constant, constant learning um, and um, an amazing education, you know, and, and it's just beautiful. I mean, to see them. Each morning, and they bring a, they brought a, a, a quality to my life that you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. which is incredible. So that's, um, yeah, they call it the in, in Ashanga they call it the seventh series. In the Ashanga the which sixth said, series, yeah, yeah, <laughs> children yeah. seventh series. Oh, okay, <laughs> so oh, true. Right. I was speaking to John the other day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, okay. It's so true. It's like it's wow. they are. Um, it's yeah, another level up. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're just they're just wide open. So they're, so I mean that that's ah. definitely changed. So you know it's, it's definitely changed me. Uh, you know, my practice has changed. I had to change. I don't do, you know, I don't go and practice for two hours in the morning. Mm. Now I get I get up. I try and get up early. Provided I get to bed, um, I get up and I get a meditation done. You know, quick shower and I'll sit and meditate. Do some pranayama meditation if I've got time. Even if it's just ten minutes, you know. But ideally, I can do but sometimes long. I can do longer than that mostly. But um, get that done, and then if I can practice, I'll practice then too. Uh, because once they get up, that's it. Game on. Mm. <laughs> your, your life is, um, you know, it's it's it's, it's happening. So um, so yeah, and it's just sort of, it's lent me to be more non-attached mm. to the to the practice, to my to my to myself, to my. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, another phrase for yoga is like to be non-attached and mm. present. To be not attached to the, the I mean, so all these all that all these concepts I I contemplated on and spoke about in the classes. <laughs> now we're coming it's to being fruition. reflected back to you, yeah. The fruition. This is like this is this is the the practice. You've mm-hmm. got to be non attached to it, but not like you know non attachment is not being detached. Yeah. Like detachment, attachment, non attachment. In a Yenger's book, Light on Life, I always remember this. Um, I, mean, I kind of mistook detachment for, uh, for sorry non-attachment for detachment mm. so I was like oh you know everything's okay don't need to be you know, need to push don't be so attached be detached from these things but you know you've still got bills to pay mm. you've still got think, food to put in your mouth you want good quality food it costs a bit more money so I still had so I was like I'd fallen, I'd fallen into that a little bit I went a little bit too yin in my uh, in my nature, which was in the, you know, it's just like it's, it's trying to find see the yeah. trying to find the balance. Yeah, it's trying to find ease. some kaya, even body. It's trying to find it. It's um, you fall out, and it's like I was there, and I, was, yeah. I, remember, I remember reading a youngest book, Light on Life, years ago, which is about the koshas, um, and he explained in there. He says, you know, there's attachment, detachment, and non-attachment. Attachment is I'm fully attached to the outcome of this, yeah. and. I will beat myself up. I if will beat everyone else. Yeah. I'll beat the planet. I'll wreck the planet to achieve my outcome. I'm so attached to it, and you know this is happening. You can see it right now. And then detachment is, I'm over. It. I'm out. This is too much. I'm just out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I don't care what damage I've done. I'm gone. I'm out. And non-attachment is, I'm here. I'm fully committed to this outcome. You know, I'm fully committed to it, but I'm non-attached to the path to get there. 
or to you know whatever the to outcome the results is, are, yeah. to the, the results. So I'm, I'm just like here. I'm in the process, and I'm going. If this is not healthy for the planet, if this is not healthy for my body, if this is not good for the students. Mm. For the, I mean, I need, I need to reassess. I need to look at this. You know, the way I'm teaching is damaging the students. Then I have to I have to look at this. I have to be humble and humility to 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 address this. Um, but I'm still committed to teaching. Mm. And I'm still committed to that. So, uh, Mr. Yengar, I remember it was a realization like, oh my, there you go. It's just so obvious. But it was um, reminding me. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm sure that as the time goes by, as a few years progress, this lesson, the same lesson will be shown to you or to us in a different way and it will teach us the same message. I feel like I've learned or I've experienced this lesson a few times in my life and different. Same lesson to be learned, but in different ways that was taught to me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah no. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's life. Mm. It's life. Mm. It's, it's, it's trying to find that 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 homeostasis, mm. that, that place where it can flow, where, where the, the, the things can, can move. Yeah. So I mean, okay. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, being a father has been like, you know, yeah, absolutely the biggest responsibility, and the biggest mirror. Mm. Definitely the biggest mirror in my life. Okay. <laughs> Some quick fire questions. Yeah. I've asked Mel this or so if you remember, so I'll ask you again. Um, what is the biggest problem in the world today and how what can you do about it? Oh, um I see me I see me I mean it's like we went from I mean we went from a world of believers into a world of achievers. We're trying to achieve we think it's we think our uh Joyfulness, or the the the, the, goal, the um, we're going to achieve everything through achievement, through through being being more, you know, having more, and that we went to that, and you know, we really need to move to more be seekers, like be uh, uh, understanding ourselves more, getting to know ourselves, so you know, heightening our level of consciousness, whatever way we do that, um, through education. I, I do, I do definitely feel that the education system needs a massive, like massive revamp. I mean, I, I went to school and I had a lot of confidence as a, as a, as a child, and I went to school and lost a lot of confidence because I wasn't actually good at it. You know, and I was like, I had a little ego there that wanted to be, you know, wanted approval and whatnot, and I, I just, you know, it's like I, I struggled. Yeah. There. And, and, you know, and, and, and then created belief systems. That completely don't support didn't support me until I but by the luck I had these younger years these first five years before I went to school of being fully believed in from my grandfather mm. um, and doing something and that that's always given me enough to mm. go and shift and change and do things and create things and, and, and you know not be afraid to go out into the world and, 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 and you know um, not know. Mm. So that that and so the education system, the, the the schooling system teaches us what to think, not how to think. So in a nutshell, we need to learn how to think, not what to mm. think. Yeah, so that's and that's you know, uh, yeah. Um, a, a mentor of mine or a, a guy that I learned off with Paul Check, and he, you know, talked it explains it that way, and it's like, it's um, we yeah, it's like you know, you just look at the world, you tell them a message, and they believe it. They don't question anything. And that's got to change, mm. or we're not here anymore. We're Ooh. gone. You know, we're, it's absolutely yeah. The, you know, the, the sixth mass extinction will come. No question. It's like you know, it's like we're not. You know, we're yeah. yeah. So that's that's just, that's a huge shift. And just sharing, student by student, class by class, a way of getting you know them to understand themselves, to be more intuitive, to, to, to question things, to question themselves. You know, and, and to, to do that in a class, especially when you've got them breathing and moving, you've got them in that place of being more open and needing to ask them, ponder a question on them, and bringing that philosophy into the room, and bringing a theme that's going to lead them to um, inductive learning, something they realise within themselves. Because you'll always act that way. Mm. You tell someone you disempower them, even to do a pose. Mm. If you tell them you know, all the right way to do a pose, you're like, oh, thank you, I, I couldn't have done this myself. But you just get them in there and, and then get them to in that place to find the pose himself empowerment foundation of the whole practice for me so that's it I mean 
it's kind of a I'm no, going to kind of off yeah. sideways about the question, but really that's it. We need to empower people. Yeah. Not not disempower people. The whole system's set up to disempower people. Yeah. You know the market and the way marketing's done and the way the way the, um, It's to show you that you're you're not enough until you have yeah. something. Yeah, and buy this thing so you can feel good about yourself but you would right. never needed that in the first place if you understand how the human being works you get them to a peak state it's mm. marketing understand if you want to understand how the human body works or understand the psychology I just go and learn from a higher quality marketer they know more about that than a psychologist yeah, does yeah 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 what people think they know, they know how want. people yeah. act, behave yeah. so they um, they just get you you know on the video get you on the television to get you into a peak state yeah flash something in your face at the peak state anchors into your ne- neurology and then you go down the road and then you, you say, oh, an example would be um, if you think of a, uh, a Budweiser advert where would they put a Budweiser advert? on the sporting channel in the adverts so they get there so they get there they know it's main it's going to be watching the football or whatever it is they're watching the break comes on and all of a sudden the break goes right on and the next minute there's a woman in a bikini dripping wet with, with, with water just coming out of the water and the male immediately looks at that see that and then just at the peak of that emotion as she starts to move and looks around and her eyes look around the flash Budweiser on your face and that anchors Budweiser the man the next day goes into the pub what beer would you want looks around oh I'll have a Budweiser because he's associating that feeling so marketing this kind of market and right through the whole it's like it's it's and it's these um, things is, is disempowering people it's creating the health of people it's the you know it's like don't need to look far yeah so I'm pretty passionate about that stuff because <laughs> I can see it I study yeah. that a lot and understand what's going on and, and okay. I mean I'm not you just got to question things step yeah. back question it well, it's good to ask questions. Oh, yeah, you can't be just like yes, yes, ma'am, no, yes, sir, no, sir. You know, yeah. you have to wait a minute. Hmm, is this what is right for me right now? Yeah. You know, you, you yeah. Yeah, you got That comes from empowering as well. Absolutely empowering to see you have got the power within you to ask a question, to say uh, no. You know, as I always say, there's no answer in life, only choices. You got to got to tune into that. You got to ask yourself. And you know, we we know naturally we follow, you know, we follow the status quo, status quo. We we, we, we go there, and it's like that's the that, that that's the biggest shift we need. It starts with yourself. Start, you know, mm-hmm. ultimately, and that's what Mel said as well. Actually, but it starts with yourself. Starts within yourself. You know, um, the revolution, forty days to <laughs> personal revolution. Start for me. That started in there, really. Um, there was a I I, can't, I used this as a theme. Uh, in my class long ago mm. maybe I should use it again but it's about conforming and about how when we were young our teacher would always tell us to um, if, if your friend jumped off the bridge would you jump off as well yeah. you know and then now it's almost as if someone is saying hey everybody's jumping off this bridge why aren't you yeah yeah, absolutely it's a beautiful way of, of mm. a really succinct way of, 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 of sharing what's actually really going on yeah. uh, right now. Not that there's, I mean, uh, someone said to me the other day there in the, in the, the, in the shop at NTUC, I was in getting some food and I was buying some stuff and the, the young guy, he said, I had my mask on, but it was down past my nose and um, he saw put your mask on and I saw I'm not into conspiracy theories. <laughs> And he laughed. He he got it. He got the joke. Yeah. Like, wow! I, I couldn't believe it. He got it. I put my mask on. I got the joke. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm in conspiracy theories. You know, and it's like, so it's like, and I'm not, and I'm not for one or the other. If you know, I'm all always yeah. for the, 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 the greater good. But you got to question things. It's like it's uh, you know it's um, yeah where we're at is it's um, um it's an interesting time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess on that note, the the uh, on 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 changing the way the education system is right now, this the yoga is also a part of education. This this is a as much as this is a studio, this is also a school on some level. We're teaching something that's not uh, like a on a particular curriculum, but we're still teaching some lessons here. So maybe in your own way, or in our own way, we are still trying to change what happens through teaching people to learn a different way or to ask questions or to empower them in that way. 
absolutely it's yeah. the whole pra- for me it's the whole practice that's what gives that's what, that's why I come in and teach it's that, that shift the ability to that shift yeah. okay um, what are you most afraid of? Oh, my most afraid wow um, wow uh, take your time I suppose it's I mean the first thing the, the first thing that came is be like would be not it's interesting. It was uh, the first thing that sort of came, sprung to my mind when you asked it because it came right out of the blue. I didn't know that question was going to be going to ask me that question. Um, it was like not um, not fulfilling, like not fulfilling my, uh, my purpose or my, mm. my journey here. Um, and then behind it came death. Mm. You know, like so. It's, it's funny that was the first one that came, and then death, and then even when I thought of death, like oh. That, you know, I'm sure come the day it'll be a fear, but mm-hmm. right now it's, it's, it didn't even really resonate. That was the, the main one, and it's like to be too, for like, for, I mean, I I, 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 I share it, and again, this is my own um, the meaning to these language. I mean, the most important thing is it's the context we're using the lang- language in. You know, we've got, it's got to explain that, and mm-hmm. we're speaking to people, especially when we're training them and stuff, but. For me, I always say the meaning of life is to discover our gifts and talents. The meaning of life, to discover the gifts and talents. Our purpose of life is to share these gifts and talents. And our dharma is to remove the obstacles that stopping us doing that. So, like, and it's just my own, uh, just you know, in class. Wow, wow, wow. And you're sharing, and then it comes out that way. Yeah. Now, you can sh- chase these words around it yeah. the way, but for me, it's like, like, like I said it one day, and I was like, wow. Yeah, so I don't know if that makes sense, but it was like it, it made it sense to me that in that day. Yeah. So I've always, I've always sort of thought of it that way, because the obstacles is you know like even if you think of Ganesha, the, the you know the Hindu god. Some, I mean, I'm I, you know I, I love philosophy and whatnot. And I really, I'm, I'm not an expert on it. So, but the way I see Ganesha, and it's just you know the way I see it. And remember, philosophy is just explaining the unexplainable. Mm. You don't need to believe it. It's, we're not trying to bow to someone outside of it. We're trying to, you know, uh, the qualities of that deity, we're trying to awaken within ourselves, not something outside of ourselves. It's to awaken something, these qualities within ourselves. And I always see Garmisha, and I ever tell the story of Garmisha. This is the way my way of saying it. Again, it's probably not the scholar way of doing it, but I say, you know, he's there and he has the obstacle. You know, the Ganesh is obviously not, he's not the remover of the obstacles, he is the obstacle. Like you're trundling through life and you come around the corner and here's the, the monkey god in the road and you're like, can you get off the road please? I need to get past. And he just sit there smiling and you drive around him. The next day or the next year or the next lifetime or whatever, you come around the corner again and here he is again. The road's narrower. And you, you know, and you, you won't move. And then you, so you, you kind of go, you know, you go under him and then the next day or the next time you come around and he's there again and it's in this you know this um, tunnel and you can't get through you can't get past him and the just the story is the the jewels and the, the treasures are within him moving through the obstacle you need to move through him you, you know, yeah. that's where and that because that's where gifts are the talent so through right, the obstacle right and yeah yeah so um our dharma is to to hit to, to 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 move in that direction. You know, if you want to change careers, if you want to, um, you know, become a father, or you want to move countries, or you want to make a difference in the planet, whatever it is you're passionate about, then whatever stop when you're doing it, that's your duty, your dharma. Your duty is your dharma. That you have to move towards that. I see, and that that's probably the most terrifying thing for me. It's like I'm, I feel I'm moving that, but my fear, my biggest fear, is like not fulfilling that. Yeah. Wow, I really okay. A lot. Of, wow, that's, that's a lot to unpack. Yeah, yeah. I would like to end on that note, but mm. I think I have one more question. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask one more question. What could be great in your life right now? And how does that make you feel? What could be great in my life now? How does that make me feel? Um, what could be great? Wow. It's an interesting question. I mean, I love my life, to be honest. I really I love my life right now. I mean, I've got these boys, and I've got another one coming, and oh, yeah. Vina, and we got on so well, and we... Um, doing what I'm doing. Oh, man, 
So maybe that question is to remind you or to show you that you you're you've maxed out, you've you've reached where you needed to be, perhaps. Definitely no. I feel there's a lot more I mean I want to develop what I um, so I want to work in every area of my teaching, of my life. Um, but doing it in a in a way that's that's natural, that's fluid, that's um, not forced, mm. but it's active. It's, it's there's an active there. There's an act, I'm actively doing it. I'm not forcing it, and that's a that's a real dance. Um, I mean that is the the whole dance of life um, to do that. But yeah, oh man, it's, it could be great. I don't. I, I find it hard to, to answer the word. I have to answer the question. Um, okay, we don't have to answer it. Yeah, could be great. Something to think about. Maybe the next time when we come back and sit down again, they'll mm. have the answer. I'm definitely going to ponder on that one yeah. because it's it's, a, it's just and it's the way it's phrased. The thing that's that I'm, I'm trying to get my head around. Um, but yeah, the, the I mean, I think I think the, the way what we just talked about in the sense of. The, the way the, the the world is. I mean, I, I believe I believe in people. You know, I believe in the greater good of people. The uh, everyone's got a. Uh, it's just a conditioning. It comes from a conditioning. It comes from, you know, an upbringing. Of course, we come in to this life with a character. You know, we come in, and of course, that's what yoga is looking at, karmically imprinted with things. And we, uh, but you know, when we come here, and it's like the. The first few years of our life is so, the first month, first hours, first moment, it's so critical. Um, and yeah, just and, you know, like understanding that, the more I understand about that, and how we've evolved, and, and yeah, I mean, it's more of a global thing. I just want to see a shift in the whole, I mean, I'm not sure how we do it. Mm. It's like, you know, I'm doing a little bit here, but it's like, I'm sure I would do it and I, you know, I don't want to be in a dogmatic way and it's always I, I, I see it as evolution everything's evolution it's just it's sort of, you know, it depends on, there needs to be a, a, a you know I suppose an explosion of something <laughs> so how it was all created they say so um, yeah but I, I, I really just want to I want to see people just you know more in power mm-hmm. I want to I really I'd be, I'd be, my life would be great if I, I love I love to see um, people and students and teachers like you just arrived at home here yeah. and it's great it's amazing it's such a you know I'm not doing a class yet I'm going to get into your class it's just like someone so young and, and just you know sharing this it's just that, that, that gives me like I, I love that it brings me so much hope but also it's like wow you know and I see even in, in Navy and Monroe and whatnot they, 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 the consciousness of these children and, and their friends younger ones it's just phenomenal like they're a new wave, new level of the shift come in already, mm. and these young children that's coming in. Even in your era, it's like you know, it's like so that that's that you know that excites me. It really does excite me. There's a, there's a definite shift on. So that's it really, and it, that that's the most that would make my life like more than great. I'd just be overwhelmed with joy, especially when you've got children and they're coming into the world and, and to see what they're yeah, going, going, to, going to work through and uh, yeah, and uh, to heal the, you know, to heal the planet, to, to, to just, you know, start to drop off the, 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 toxic, the toxicity of the, the, the planet and, and, and stuff in, in ways that's, that supports us, not you know, go back to cavemen days, but to, we, we have the technology to, 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 to transform and to shift. Everything. So that would be a dream. I like that the question that was asked to you about what could make your life better, and your response was that to help everybody else gets better, everybody else gets empowered. So uh, that was that was nice. Yeah. No. Thank you. I think, you know, if everyone's in their heart yeah. and really understand what being in their heart is, not just a, a concept, but actually they understand that. Um, uh, everyone would respond the same way because it really is about coming into that place and, 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 um, and getting to know it, not yeah. being afraid of it, getting to know it, getting seeing it, getting to know it. You know, be the to say be the feeler, not the feeling. Mm-hmm. Get to, get to know it and, 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 and train that and keep visiting that. And when you, you know, when you when you yeah, when you are faced, when you're right at your center, the the axle, the center. 
you're not the wheel, but the act, you're the axle, mm-hmm. and you're at your centre. And you know, you can wrap your arms around that, then it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, the world would be a beautiful place if that was, people were moving towards that, yeah. And on that note, uh, we can cap off this podcast. Yeah. Do you have any final words? Um, no, just really just to, to you for doing the work you're doing. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's sharing this. Um, and to the, anyone who's listening and that, please uh, listen, just, just share this. You know, not, not for me, please not for me, <laughs> not for Aaron, but just for the greater good. Yeah. You know, and it's, you're, you're really living, like I mentioned Dharma, I mean, you're really, you're really living your, your purpose here. I can mm-hmm. see it. I mean, even the setup for the room, and the, the way, just the whole, the way you conduct yourself, the way you live and the way, the way you're moving and the growth you've, you've taken. And, and so it's, it's, yeah, it gives me so much inspiration. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Hey. <laughs> All right. Wow. Oh, um, do you have any um, uh, workshops coming up that you want to mention, or any TTs coming up as well? Um, I have a little throwing your dates as well. Yeah, no, I have a little uh, meditation uh, a series coming up in September mm. at Sierra Valley Point, um, okay. from eleven thirty to twelve thirty. It's uh, foundations of meditation for over four weeks. Uh, I've got the part time teacher training coming up in uh, uh, December. So, mm. uh, but there's a lot of trainings here. It's great the way home do it. They've got each teacher's Copper's got his training. Lee's in the middle of our training right now. Um, CETA's got her training coming up. So the most important thing is for students to um, to uh, resonate with the teacher mm. and then go there and, 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 and learn and develop. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Aaron. If you need more information, you can go to the home website. All the TTs are there. And you can find Blair on Instagram. What's your Instagram again? It's Blair.Hughes. There you go. <laughs> I don't post very much, but it's there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for doing this together with me. No, thank you, Aaron. I googled what Shinty is, S H I N T Y, and it really, it really is just hockey on grass. Like, think of our floor ball, only like the sticks are made of like solid wood, as thick as like a baseball bat, and it's huge. And everybody looks like they're wearing soccer jersey. So it's it's very funny to see. Go Google it. That's what. Blair was into when he was young. You're welcome to go ask him about it if you know what it is. And maybe ask him for pictures. I don't know. I'm sure there's a picture of him in his jersey holding his shinty stick somewhere floating around on his Facebook page or something. I would like to see that. And you can find more information about Blair in the show notes below as well. Details of his upcoming workshops and trainings are all listed below. So if you're interested, you can message him on IG, talk to him at the studio, uh, drop home an email. If uh, Yeah, there's a lot of ways to contact people now. So like, subscribe, share this party on your IG, IG stories, tag me, I'll repost it. Support the podcast if you like what you hear. I mentioned that already at the beginning. And yeah, stay tuned for the next, next few episodes. I already know who I'm going to talk to i'm very excited to talk to those people and yeah busy busy so um, what else what else today is the 10th of august yesterday was national day happy birthday singapore and yeah that's it i got nothing left to say i'm just gonna end off the same way i always do uh abruptly okay bye